Hi there, my name is Mark James and I'm the Area Vice President of Sales. And I've been to a lot of trust plants over the years and I have a lot of common questions on improving production and creating more safety and ergonomics for employees and just better output in general. So I'd like to share a couple of things that I've learned over the years of what you can do to your shop to get set up for success. So let's jump in. First and foremost, it's so critical to get the data that the individual trust installers and builders need. Historically, plants would use printed paperwork and that works just fine, but there's gotta be a better way to get that information to the individual employees without having them have to physically share a single piece of paper. So I suggest installing either like an LED or LCD screen, or even a projection monitor directly over the table. By doing that, we can now get the shop drawings, lumber placement, plate placement, uh, even dimensions to the builders in a shared way. And this will dramatically speed up their cycle time because again, they're just not having to walk around and get out of their build station just to glance at a piece of paper. So that's a good first step. Another great step that maybe seems uh, very generic, but that is installing nail guns or hanging nail guns over the build site itself. The reason why I like them hanging over the gantry is so, number one, the builders always 100% know where the nail gun is. They're not dealing with uh, the nail gun laying on the ground or laying on the table or dealing with an air hose laying across the gantry. And they don't have to remove that or make sure it's in a safe location before they actually press the truss. So I urge everyone to install a hanging nail gun, either with a reciprocating uh, device or some sort of counterweight that really helps the, uh, the folks building trusses. Another item that is often overlooked is what a batch looks like or how big a batch is and how those batches are delivered to the tables themselves. For starters, I really promote using small batches, something in the four to maybe six truss size at the, at the absolute max. When you're doing that, it allows the pieces to be stacked on the cart itself in a way that's a little easier to not only handle, but a little bit easier to stack them in a way that the, uh, the builders at the tables are going to be able to utilize. And by that, I mean stacking top cords first, bottom cords second, and webs third. And the other thing it allows you to do is ensure that the boards are orientated in a manner in which they don't have to be spun around or turned at the table. Again, we're doing that to, to maximize safety as much as possible. I also like to raise carts a little bit. If you can see the picture there, that cart is, has a deck that's about 20 to 24 inches off the ground. And that dramatically improves the ergonomics of the builders, getting that lumber off the cart and onto the table. They're not being forced to bend down and, and um, and work with that heavier timber, especially if you're using wider lumber like a two by eight or a two by 12. After the cart has been stacked in a proper manner, I also suggest that you move it directly to the build site if you've got the space. Again, minding which job should be built next and which batch should be built next so that when the people on the table are finished building a truss, they don't have to go looking for the next batch. We want them to quickly go to the next truss and quickly pick the lumber that they need and start building as quickly as possible. Another big safety aspect and time saver uh, when building roof trusses is adding some sort of uh, riding platform to your gantry. In this case, 
uh, MyTech offers a what we call the top cord writing platform that allows the person building the truss, typically the peak, that's working on the table to just jump right onto that writing platform in a safe way so they don't have to get on and off the table, which can uh, be hard on someone's body or someone's knees. And they can literally drive the gantry head back and forth, pressing the truss while on the platform, allowing the other two operators that are on the floor to continue doing other tasks and get ready for the next truss. So this is something that you can put on a gantry brand new, or they can often be retrofitted to gantries after they're already installed. Another change to a piece of equipment that I would really suggest everyone uh, strongly look at is an auto eject roller paired with the high slope ejectors. I've got a short video here for you that you'll see how easy these are to operate and the ergonomic advantages that they offer. Now that was great. So you can see those high slope ejectors allow the truss to slide off the table with no human interaction. And then the auto eject rollers ensure that it is safely brought on to the exit rollers uh, and uh, with, also with no human interaction. And it allows the people, again, that are operating the equipment that are on the floor to begin other tasks and not have to worry about lifting or pushing that truss completely off the gantry. I can't talk about success in a truss plant without talking about the MyTech Wizard auto jigging. This is something that is so unbelievably critical and probably the one thing that can save you the, the most time. For those that aren't familiar, the Wizard auto jigging replaces the manually placed pucks on a gantry table with pucks that are completely automated. As we know, the manually placed pucks take uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour to move in a complicated truss, especially if you're working on something that's like a step down or something with a complicated vault or in-room attic, could take a very long time to move. With the Wizard Auto Jigging, those pucks move almost instantly and the operators can start setting lumber to build that truss on the table within literal seconds of pressing the button. There's a great feature that we also offer on the Wizard Auto Jigging, and it's this drop-in jigging for the heel. That was always a common complaint of auto jigging is that there wasn't a heel stop to properly brace the bottom cord. Well, we've taken that into consideration, and we've come up with this small block that goes right, right on the literal Wizard pin and allows you to have that end stop. So just to ensure that your truss stays nice and straight and square. Another fantastic addition to a truss plant to get you set up for success is the match point blade saw teamed up with the assembly guide system. The assembly guide system is a advanced printing mechanism that offers several different advantages for your workers. First and foremost, we literally print the connector plate size, shape, location right onto the truss. In the picture on the left, we're showing a four by six plate labeled four by six. And the uh, installer was holding the plate, would just set it right in that rectangle and know that they've got the perfect plate placement. This is a huge um, advantage for the folks building the truss and can save a lot of time with plate placement or changes later should that plate be put in the wrong spot. We also print an arrow on each individual board that points to the peak of the truss and that's simply put in place to allow the installer to pick the timber up from the carts at the table and set it on the gantry orientated correctly the first time every time. And finally, I wanted to point out that we can also print permanent lateral bracing areas directly onto the cords and the webs of the truss. So 
when those trusses get out into the field and the installers are nailing off each individual truss, they don't have to go back and refer to the individual paperwork or the building layout to know right where that permanent lateral bracing gets nailed on. It's a huge time saver in the field as well. And I couldn't talk about a successful trust plant without talking about the MyTech virtual plant software, also known as MVP. MVP by far is the heart of an individual trust plant. It can help with job and batch scheduling. It gives all the individual data needed at each individual workstation. And we track each individual uh, component down to the piece. It can also help with moving jobs around. It's very, very easy to reschedule and move batches and jobs on the fly without affect anything on the shop floor like before when there was a lot of paperwork and clipboards per se. MVP is also what drives all of the equipment. It's what gives all of the data to the match point blade to print those connector plate locations. It's what gives data to the wizard to move all the pins. And of course, it's also what's driving the new LED screens and projection screens over the gantry tables to give the information that the assemblers need when they need it. And finally, for the general managers or managers of each trust plant, MVP can also give us back a lot of job data. If you're looking to see what materials were used, what jobs were built when, who built them, and in the best case scenario to get some sort of profitability report to ensure that the plant is moving forward the way it should. So I hope you're able to take advantage of some or all of these items to keep your trust plant moving forward and set up for success. Thanks for your time.